Well, I don't know you well, but I think that I can tell that you and I could be just as happy as two birds in a tree. And all I'm asking for you to do is to please go steady with me. But if you don't feel the same, I'll just go and hide my head in shame. Hello there, thrill seekers. What do you think of this t-shirt? I got it at Kohl's yesterday. Live long and prosper, Star Trek, huh? All right. Well, that song you just heard was called Please Go Steady With Me, and a few years ago I was trying to come up with an album full of 60s style or 60s or 70s style bubblegum pop music, not current style bubblegum music. Ziggy is... I don't know what he's uh, thinking, what he's barking at today, but he's just barking at things. Anyway, uh, that was part of uh, my 60s, uh, 70s style bubblegum music, and I shortened it for the uh, purposes of, of the intro to this. It had a couple more verses, but that was my own little uh, composition uh, called Please Go Steady With Me. Anyway, I got an email recently wherein somebody was asking me about the concept of hope. I think the email went something like, am I right in thinking that uh, Dogen would probably tell us that hope is something we should let go of or abandon? And the answer I gave him was, I can't think of any place where Dogen discussed the concept of hope. That the Japanese word that's usually translated as hope is kibo, and it has a slightly different kind of meaning from the English word hope. Uh, that, for example, I couldn't imagine a Japanese politician putting a picture of himself on a poster with the word kibo at the bottom of it or at the top of it. I can't remember what Obama. Remember those Obama posters that said hope and had a picture of Obama on them? I couldn't imagine. It would be weird to have the word kibo on a poster for a politician the way Obama had the word hope on his posters because it, it has a different sort of feeling to it. Uh, but... And, and, and since I'd said to the guy that I couldn't remember Dogen ever using the word hope, uh, I, I then thought about it some, and I remembered, yeah, there are a couple of places or a few, a handful of places that I can think of where the word hope comes up in the Nishijima cross translation of Shobo Genzo, but it's a little different, and I found some this morning, so I'd like to read them to you so you can get a, a kind of a sense of the way the word hope is used when it comes up in Nishijima Cross's version, and, and, and maybe a, a little bit of a nuance in the word hope as, as it's used. And I didn't double-check to make sure these are all instances of the word kibo being used, but I think that these are the word is the is the Japanese word kibo being used? But um, we'll we'll leave it aside the linguistics of it. But here's here's the word hope as it appears in the English translation. Uh, I didn't uh, check chapter and verse on all of these because I don't think it's all that relevant. But I do happen to know the first one comes from Inmo, which is one of my favorite chapters of Shobo Genzo, which is why I know it comes from Inmo. Uh, and it says once this mind is established, and he's talking about the Bodhi mind, the mind that aspires to enlightenment. He says once this mind is established, abandoning our for former playthings, we hope to hear what we have not heard before and seek to experience what we have not experienced before. It's kind of a famous quote, or at least it's famous to me, and I, I know it well. So, so there's a, an instance of the word hope, and here's a few more. 
After the ancestral master came from the West, that's Bodhidharma, he directly cut to the source of the confusion and spread the unadulterated Buddha Dharma. We should hope that the same thing will happen in our country. So that's hope in that case. Uh, here's another quote from a different source. Now in recommending, or I think this is the same, I think that was from Ben Doa. Now, in recommending the practice in which Bodhi, enlightenment, is directly experienced, I hope to demonstrate the subtle truth that the Buddhist patriarchs have transmitted one to one, and thus to make you into people of the real state of truth. And here's another quote from a different chapter. If we hope to build a place of practicing the truth or to establish a temple, we should follow the Dharma form which the Buddhist patriarchs have authentically transmitted. And here's a bit longer a quote. I'll cut it down a little bit for you. Uh, another, this is another chapter of Shobo Genzo. The Dharma is rarely met. Shakyamuni Buddha says, when you meet teachers who expand, who expound, not expand, who expound the supreme state of Bodhi, have no regard for their race or caste, do not notice their looks, do not dislike their faults, and do not examine their deeds. Uh, only because you revere their prajna, their wisdom, uh, let them eat hundreds and thousands of pounds of gold every day. Yummy. Uh, serve them by presenting heavenly food, serve them by scattering heavenly flowers, do prostration do prostrations and venerate them uh, three times a, a day uh, never let anxiety or annoyance arise in your mind etc etc and this being so we should hope that even trees and stones might preach to us okay there's a, there's the word hope uh, another instance in another chapter therefore Though they have wasted precious time in the past, as long as their present life continues, they should without delay make the following vow. I hope that I, together with all living beings, may hear the right Dharma through this life and through every life hereafter. If I am able to hear it, I will never doubt the right Dharma, and I will never be disbelieving when I meet the right Dharma, etc., uh, etc., et uh, and so those are instances where he uses the word hope. So um, in, in that case, hope carries a similar meaning to the way hope would be used in that same sort of usage. <laughs> Sorry, can't come up with the right word in English. So so there, I don't need to explain further how the word hope is used. But there's that, that kind of secondary meaning of hope, which, oh gosh, you know, I, I, before I made this video, I was trying to think of, of how it works, but um, it, it's hard to say. When I looked it up online, I get, uh, let's see, a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Okay, that's that's similar to the way it's being used here, but uh, it's also given synonyms, aspiration, desire, wish, expectation, ambition, aim, plan, expect, anticipate. Okay, these are all sort of similar meanings, but there's this sort of, I don't know, when, when we say hope in English, it has this kind of emotional you know, I want to say wet feeling. I, I don't know why the, the image of wetness comes to mind, but it does. It's sort of this kind of like hope, you know? I, 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 I don't know. I hope I'm giving you a sense of it. But it's that, it's that sense that Barack Obama and his team were playing on when they made that poster, that sort of hope that sort of idea of there's this thing coming in the future that we're anticipating, that we're sort of fixing our minds on and kind of, you know, building up as a thing that we hold in, 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 our, in our hearts, I guess, is the sort of image that we have, and kind of fixate on as something that... that uh, that we are aiming for, that's a goal we have in mind. And that's not quite the meaning that that Dogen is, is using when he says, uh, we should hope to hear what we have not heard before and uh, experience what we have not experienced before. That's a different sort of hope. So hope as a kind of you know, when you're fixating on this kind of something that's, that's going to happen kind of hope, 
Yeah, this is where we we get in trouble with linguistics. You know, that's it's it's a kind of trap that language forces us into, and it's it's the kind of trap that you can't use words to get yourself out of. Because I find myself doing that as I am making this video now and as, as I'm trying to talk it through. I'm trying to use words to get myself out of the trap that words have put me into. So, the, so you're, not gonna, you're not gonna be able to do that. So if I say hope is something that you need to let go of, well yeah, hope is something that you need to let go of. You need to let go of everything. So when you're actually sitting in Zazen, whatever comes up you let go of it so if it's hope you let go of it if it's an image of a cheese sandwich you let go of it if it's if it's what time is this stupid zazen going to be over you let go of it if it's if it's oh my gosh is this feeling enlightenment oh boy it's coming it's coming you let go of that too you know everybody has hopes for their Zazen experience. I, I have hopes for my Zazen experience too. I had hopes when I first started doing Zazen and I have hopes now. You know, it's it's part of the game. It's part of how it is to be human. You, 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 you hope something good comes of it. You know, you think, uh, you think I'm doing this practice and I'm not doing it for nothing. You know, I'm not putting in all this time and effort and energy for nothing. You know, no, nobody does that. So it would, be, it would be stupid to expect people to engage in a practice that takes so much effort and so much energy and so much time without, without the idea that, there, that the, anything good is going to come of it, you know. So no, no, no you, you'd be dumb to, to engage in it like that. So everybody's got that. So that's just, that's just part of, of how this thing works. So don't, you don't have to feel guilty or bad or feel like it's going to ruin your practice just the feeling that you want to get something out of it, that, that you have some kind of hope, that, that you're going to, what's Dogen say, um hear what you have not heard before and experience what you have not experienced before. That's, that's, you know, even Dogen tells you that's, we should do that. Once this mind is established, abandoning our former th playthings, we hope to hear what we have not heard before and we seek to experience what we have not experienced before. That's what we do. At the same time, when you're in the midst of practice, the thing that you do in practice is you you just sit. You just sit. And the reason you just sit is because your just sitting is the practice. And this kind of dovetails into something somebody else sent me uh, the other day, which, uh, which is kind of interesting. This is a quote from a book people keep recommending to me, but I haven't read it. And the book is called China Root, Taoism Chan and the Original Zen by David Hinton. So I haven't read it, so I can't, I can't recommend it. I can't not recommend it because I haven't read it. But I thought this quote that somebody sent me was kind of interesting. It says, It may seem unlikely that our trivial and obsessive train of thought is the movement of the cosmos or the Tao, the cosmos thinking itself. Deep philosophy perhaps, but everyday trivia, like the nonsense that just goes on in your mind. And yet, isn't that typical of the cosmos? It's mostly trivial and repetitive. The same galaxies, stars, and planets over and over, same seasons and grasses and insects, same days and nights, same thoughts and feelings. So just the fact that your, your thoughts and feelings and stuff that goes on in your head is just kind of repetitive, mundane, boring, stupid, trivial, doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad or wrong or not cosmic, you know? We're all sort of sitting there doing our zazen, you know, having trivial thoughts about toothpaste and 
I don't know, you know, whatever dumb things are going on in your head, you know, your dumb things are different from my dumb things. But, you know, most of what goes on in my head during Zazen is just dumb stuff. So you're sitting there and dumb stuff is, if, is floating in your head and you're wanting some cosmic stuff. You know, you're wanting some kind of great Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, some great, perfect, uh, unsurpassed, complete enlightenment, some kind of whiz-bang experience, the kind of thing you read about in books or see in movies where somebody's like, whoa, there I've understood the great depths of, of the cosmic, wonderful experience, just like in Star Trek V where Cybox, Spock's brother, you know, Mr. Spock's brother, you know, uh, Mr. Spock is uh, this one. You know, Mr. Spock's brother hijacks the Enterprise to go to the center of the galaxy and find God there, you know, because that's where the thing is, you know, because it's at the center of the galaxy and you got to hijack the Starship Enterprise and go at warp speed and fight the Klingons and everything and get to the center of the galaxy and go through the Great Barrier and there's, you know, all sorts of stuff and explosions and firecrackers and then God is going to be there and everything's going to be great. That's what we, you know, want from our zazen. You don't want sitting there in this dumb room, you know, uh, with, you know, you got gas, you know, because of something you ate and you're going, oh, geez, I hope I don't fart and, you know, and, uh, oh, God, this, you know, this stupid trivia is going on in your head and you're going, you know, what about that answer on Family Feud the other night? That was really stupid. How come those people lost Family Feud with the dumb answer? I would never have said elephants. I mean, my God, why would you say elephants? You know, that's that kind of stupid trivia. That's what the cosmos is doing. <laughs> that's what, you know, that's what this guy, uh, what's his name? David Hinton, you know, cleverly noticed that the cosmos is just constantly making the same bugs over and over. It makes a billion zillion mosquitoes, you know? That's the cosmos doing trivia. You know, it's just going, ah, oh, I'll make another mosquito, and another mosquito, and another, let's just, just make a zillion mosquitoes, the, you know, uh, maybe some, some, you know, other bugs and bacteria and stuff and another bazillion of those and a planet you know another planet another rock planet and a star and stuff you know it's just it's just trivia it's just dumb trivia and that's what the whole thing is all about so you're you're mirroring that in your head when you're doing zazen interesting little observation or big observation i think so so don't worry about it you know if that's all that's going on in your mind you are mirroring the cosmos with your trivia so there you go hope and trivia for today uh so i thought that was kind of interesting and hope you enjoyed the song and everything else and uh that's it that's it for me uh, if you want to keep supporting my trivial pursuit of trivia, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Uh, those are my main and usually only ways of making a living, and I really appreciate your support, but as always, you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. So there. Uh, but I do thank you if you do support me, because that really, really helps. So we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. See you later. Bye. All right, Ziggy, what do you hope for? You hope for walks and ice cream and see your friend Fico? Yeah. All right. Let's go inside and edit the video, all right? All right, Ziggy.